So you're thinking about building a staffing business. Now, what I've learned recently is that most people interpret staffing as placing temps, contract staffing, totally different than traditional recruiting where you would charge a percentage or fee of salary, essentially called headhunting as you may know it. So for this video, let's just talk about how you can build your own staffing business where you place temps. So I've done this three times in my lifetime Currently, I'm doing performance-based search, which is retained search, where I charge a fee up front, and then I charge a percentage of salary. So I'm no longer in the staffing contract world, but I've got 25 years of experience in that field because those are the companies that I previously started and built, scaled, and sold. So you're in good hands. In a couple of minutes here, I'm gonna go ahead and dive into my computer and show you the software stack that I would use if I was starting out brand new with my staffing business. Okay, so a couple of things that you wanna consider before starting your staffing business is what type of industry or niche do you wanna go into? Now, some good ones to consider would be obviously IT, medical, light industrial warehouse, renewable energy. These are areas right now where most companies need to hire contract personnel for project-based staffing. And the good thing about these industries is that in most cases, you're not going to have to educate or sell your hiring manager as to why staffing is the best value and business model for them because they're used to it. They've probably used recruiters in the past. They understand the importance and value of it. And typically they just want to know what type of candidates you have in your pipeline and if they're sustainable and if they'll last. And if they do, they're going to come back to you for more business. So there's been times in my life where I've placed a contract employee, like a technician at a project. He did so well two weeks into it. The manager calls me back. Hey, Russ, we need 10 more technicians to start on Monday. So things start building from there. There's an incredible opportunity for profit and building wealth when you have a staffing business. It's almost like owning properties, like you're a landlord and you have properties all around your city that you're accumulating. Same thing with human capital. Before you know it, you've got 30, 40, or 50 people that are working on the street in projects where you're billing every hour. So you're doing other things, enjoying your life and making money every hour. And it really builds up with that amazing residual income what they call mailbox money. And it's a great way to build wealth and have a company that you can work for the rest of your life. All right, so here's a few tips when starting your staffing business. And again, I'll show you my software stack here in a second. But number one, when you start your company, guys, I don't really dive into how to start a business. Pretty simple stuff, right? You wanna apply with your state. I'm in Florida, so I go to sunbiz.org, get my articles of incorporation. Then I go to irs.gov if you're here in the States and get your federal tax ID number, which takes seconds. So all that stuff's pretty easy. Do you need a website? I say no in the beginning. Just go ahead and launch your staffing business. Get your LinkedIn profile on point so you're branded properly. You're speaking to your ideal clients. They know exactly what you do. That's important. But as far as the website, yes, you want to have one eventually, but do not let that stop you from moving forward with your staffing business. The hardest part about a staffing company and getting it off the ground is finding clients. Uh, luckily for you, we've got a phenomenal biz dev hunting system that we can share with you within our membership group that were 90% open rates, 20 to 30% reply rates, crushes cold email, cold calling, et cetera. So I can teach you more about that, or you can watch some of my previous YouTube videos to learn how that process works. All right, so when coming up with your company name, do not use the word staffing or recruiting in your company name, and here's why. When you own a staffing business, you're gonna need insurances general liability, workers' compensation, okay? Most underwriters, this is from my own experience, do not like working with recruiting and staffing companies. Reason being, it's a high risk for them. It's very transactional because you're placing temps. Let's face it, you're in the temporary business. That's what it is. So underwriters are not in favor of writing you a policy. When they see recruiting and staffing, they pretty much run for the hills. So when you're starting thinking about a name, Keep those two words out of it. All right, you're gonna to need to find an insurance broker in your neighborhood. They're a dime a dozen. And how you wanna explain this to your insurance broker is that, yeah, you're starting a staffing business. You're gonna be placing consultants and just let them know what area industry that you're gonna be working in, okay? When it comes time to getting workers' compensation, you can get your own plan. However, I feel when starting out, the best way to do it is to find a PEO, Professional Employment Organization. Again, they're a dime a dozen. ADP has a solution for it, but what they'll do is run everything for you, your payroll, 
time cards, workers' compensation, sometimes general liability. So it's a one-stop shop for all those needs that you're gonna have off the bat. It's a good short-term solution until you get enough money where you can get your own workers' comp policy in place, have a really good history of no injuries, et cetera, that's important, and then you'll be able to get your own workers' comp plan. But for now, the PEO is really the way to go. All right, so let's jump into the financial side and obligation that you need to anticipate when starting your staffing business, and that is you will be operating as a bank. When you make a placement, when you place a temp, your obligation is to pay that employee every Friday, every week. That's competitive. That's what you're going to have to do. And your invoices typically won't be due until 30 days down the road. So you're going to have about four weeks of you floating money to your employee. And this will be a W-2 employee. You do not want to place the 1099s. That's a tax nightmare. So my advice for you is bring them on your payroll as W-2 employees. Hire a payroll company like an ADP. Again, there's a ton of them. You can shop them around. But you're always going to be facing the cash flow as long as you have your staffing business. So it's important to have enough capital and money when you start your staffing business. Another option would be a factoring company where you can actually sell your invoices to them and get a percentage of your money up front on day one, maybe 80, 85 percent. They'll withhold the next 15, 20 percent until the payment actually comes in. But I used a factoring company many years ago when I first started because I just didn't have the capital and cash flow to support the growth that I was having. Uh, eventually, you want to get out of that solution and just have your own money that you can put into your business and put into your payroll every week. But keep in mind, you're going to be operating as a bank for as long as you have a staffing company. It's very important to understand. You can't really jump into owning a staffing company with minimal funds. All right, guys. So those are some of the things that you want to consider when starting and building your staffing business. Let me go ahead and jump into my computer and show you the software stack that I would use in the beginning to get clients and to get candidates. All right, guys. So here's the software stack that I currently use and I would recommend that you use for your new staffing business. Number one, LinkedIn. This is the best platform to get clients, to get candidates. You want to make sure your page is branded properly like you see mine right here. Lots of tricks and strategies within LinkedIn that um, we can teach you, but LinkedIn is what you're going to want. Then you're going to want to get Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is going to help you build very sophisticated targeted list of clients, hiring managers, as well as candidates that you can then put into Recruiting Me Leadcast like you see right here. These are campaigns that we can create that will integrate with your Sales Navigator account at scale on automation. It's got an AI component to it, which we develop these very sophisticated uh, sequences that you see right here that go out to uh, hiring managers as well as candidates, and you can expect a 90% open rate along with a 20 to 30% reply rate. Kills uh, cold email, cold calling, nothing better than what you're seeing right here. I would then get Dub $40 a month. So this is where you want to do your one-on-one -on -one personalized videos. This has been a great strategy to get your brand awareness out there, to get clients, to get candidates. I'm a big fan of this, and as you can see, I shoot a ton of videos every day. I don't complain about it. I do it because it works. Moving right along, Taplio, great tool for your content posting on LinkedIn. You want to make sure you're posting at least two times a day on LinkedIn, and we can teach you strategic ways to do that where you can create inbound leads, the best leads possible, where companies and hiring managers actually raise their hand and want to meet with you. Okay, so you want an MPC page. These are A player passive candidates that you'll be marketing to your clients in this fashion. Really great way to get responses. You're also going to want a shortlist page where when you have two to three candidates on a shortlist page with a scoring system, you can send this over to your clients. It's phenomenal. A great way for your clients to get an inside look of your candidates. Very professional. You want a video right here of your candidate introducing themselves and these convert very high and help you get the interview. And that's what you want. Okay. Moving along, you're definitely going to want an ATM, ATS or CRM, which we will have for you as well. You know, guys, don't get too hung up on the ATS options out there. You need a place to store contacts, candidates, resumes, clients, information, be able to mass market through text or email, and maybe some have some opportunity pipelines like you see right here. I use this religiously where I can drag the opportunities, the people along in the uh, funnel stage, but it also has a really robust reporting tool. But anyways, we, we give this to you when you join Recruiting Me. And then uh, here's the website I was telling you about. This is my recruiting website, nothing too fancy. And guys, don't let this stop you from moving forward with your staffing business. You don't need a website to make 
a million dollars a year. I know plenty of people that are very successful and wealthy without a website. What's most important, guys, when you start off is get your LinkedIn profile on point. This is the most important piece. All right, guys, hope that helps. And uh, I'm excited for you to start your own staffing business. It's incredibly lucrative, fulfilling, and you're going to crush it. Thanks.